program contains graphic images of knife attack victims. Britain's towns and cities are facing record levels of violent crime. In this program, a city which is currently experiencing a frightening epidemic of knife attacks. The city's hospitals are overrun with the victims of this blade culture, making Glasgow one of Britain's toughest towns. Once described as the Chicago of Europe because of its organized crime and gangland slayings, Glasgow has maintained its reputation as one of Britain's most violent cities. Uh, most people get a knife nowadays. Heard the people getting caught, know somebody that's been caught. In 2003, there were a total of 81 murders throughout the city, giving it a higher murder rate per capita than both Belfast and London. What makes Glasgow so different from other cities is the high proportion of murders that involve the use of knives. Glasgow is unique compared to the rest of what I would call the civilised world. On average, we see roughly two to three knife injuries a day. In this programme, we will look at how a territorial and knife-carrying culture contributes to Glasgow's high murder rate. Glasgow's always had a problem with knives. An inch lower, I could have been dead. We spend a night with the people who see the carnage up close. It transpires he's been stabbed in the chest, just to the right of the, the breastbone. And look at what makes Glasgow the murder capital of Western Europe. Well, Glasgow's two sides to it, doesn't it? If you drive into the city, you see it's regenerating along the, the banks of the Clyde. If you step out into the housing estates, there's a trend of binge drinking, knife carrying, a willingness to use that knife. Crime reporter Alex Robertson has been covering Glasgow's violent crimes for six years. This has led him to most areas around the city. The south side of the city doesn't experience the problems the other areas do. This killing of this teenager, Thomas Loughrey, he was quite simply an innocent bystander who witnessed a fight between another teenager and his girlfriend. He tried to intervene and was stabbed to death. These tens actually get the highest rate of violent crime in the force area and one weekend alone in the East End there was four murders. On my right is the Sheeling Bar, Gordon Ross, 36 year old, um, drinking on a Tuesday night and slain outside a police launched a murder investigation which as yet is still open. We're now in Pollock Shields where 15 year old Chris Donald, he was abducted and he was found dead the following day. This was a schoolboy. Much of Glasgow's blade problem is put down to a subculture of young gangs. The members often referred to as NEDs, or non-educated delinquents. Glasgow's NEDs have a reasonably famous reputation. The NED in Glasgow parlance tends to be the track-suited, violent, abusive young man from outlying housing estates. He hangs around in street corners and is more often or not involved in violence or, you know, shoplifting. He's prepared to get high on drink and or drugs at the weekend and go looking for a fight. Territorialism amongst Neds is widespread across Glasgow. There are over 200 individually named gangs across the city, separated by the margins of their housing schemes. The majority are not involved in any organised criminal activity, except acts of violence. Well, if I go in a Friday night or Saturday night and taste this light tea, like, they'll stab you or bottle you or whatever. Because I've had drinking them or the drugs, they just go mental and start attacking you. Springburn in North Glasgow is a typical area where territorialism among youths can lead to running battles we tracked down members from two local gangs. Both insisted on withholding their identities through fear of retribution. Their voices have been distorted. 
when you're young in it, and you're daft. You want a gang, you want to like this, you need to like that. Fight with people. Happens here every weekend nearly, to hear a new person get stabbed. Most youngsters in Glasgow are okay in nice lockbacks, that's about it. Lockbacks are else just boat on people, just smash them around the face with a boat. I think in certain schemes in certain parts of the city, that a lot of young people will look up to the local hard man, the local gangster, and almost aspire to be as, as tough as him. It's fighting all the time, hundreds of fighting, getting drunk, getting mad with it, it's causing trouble. They'll get you in a gang, they'll just all charge at you and they in if they don't get you with a bottle or the knife. But you know, a large culture at that age of, of, of alcoholism, and with alcohol problems, violence often ensues, and if they're carrying knives, and that's the, the thing they'll often resort to using, you know? Well, when people get a drink, it's false courage. Think they're this and that, and then they stupid put hang to people that don't really deserve it. Stabbings do not just involve gang members. Innocent people also get caught up in the violence. This is something that 19-year-old accountancy student Christopher Begley found out in September 2003. You hear about knife attacks happening all the time in Glasgow. It's quite, it is quite commonplace nowadays, but you never imagine it's going to happen to yourself. I'd been for a few drinks with a few friends. I mean, probably only talking in the pub for maybe two hours tops, so it's not as if we were drunk. I walked one of my friends home, turned around to go back down, back towards home, got talking to a couple of boys that I knew for school. Another guy, one of our friends, I only know who he is because he used to work with somebody that I know. He was probably the drunkest out of the lot, and I think he'd probably been taking something as well by the state of his eyes, pupils dilated and whatever. Out of nowhere, no argument, no conflict, nothing. He's just lunged at me. Initially, I thought I'd been punched. So I took a step back thinking, I'm going to get hiding off of three boys here. But as soon as I seen the blood in my jacket, I realised it was a knife or something had been slashed. He cut me from just behind my ear, right down under my jawline to just under my chin. It's about a seven or eight inch scar. Uh, I got six stitches at the deepest part, and the rest was about butterflies. There was 25 butterfly stitches to seal up the rest. Luckily, it wasn't too deep. Christopher's attacker was arrested within hours. But as in many other such cases, the witnesses refused to give evidence. So I was definitely lucky with it, because for a start, I'm still here talking about it. Uh, an inch lower, I could have been dead. <laughs> One minute this man was out walking his dog, the next he's lying in his own blood. Starting Glasgow's hospitals have long been in the media spotlight, highlighting the problems of everyday casual violence. To the patient, the attack is little more than a fact of everyday life. Usual attack on Many knife attacks go unreported. In 2003, the police recorded 404 knife incidents. But Glasgow Royal Infirmary alone treated over 1,000 stabbings in the same year. On average, we see roughly two to three knife injuries a day, and uh, on average, two to three a week will be serious or life-threatening. Three weeks ago, uh, in, in one weekend, we had two homicides. In my experience, Glasgow is unique compared to the rest of what I would call the civilised world in terms of the, the, the scale and the severity of the knife injuries that we see. It's Saturday night, and for many in Glasgow, that means a big night ahead. Statistics show that 37% of stabbings occur at the weekend, making it twice as likely to be killed on the streets of Glasgow on a Friday or Saturday night. At the Scottish Ambulance Depot in central Glasgow, paramedic Ray Hanna prepares for a night on the town. Well, mentally you can expect the whole spectrum of assaults from the relatively minor to the really quite serious. From that, I mean someone just punching the nose with a broken nose, to someone has a knife stuck into his chest. An hour into the shift, Ray gets his first call out to an assault. For a 39-year-old male being stabbed, possibly through the lungs. With the police already at the scene, technician Lynn MacDonald is first to treat the injured man. The man has been stabbed in the chest during a street fight, but has managed to crawl back to his flat. Did you see what kind of weapon they used? How big was the blade? Any ideas? I know it was sort of, oh, 
kind of fast happening. As well as being stabbed, the victim has also been hit several times on the head with a crowbar. Chair's right behind you. So you've been stabbed by a knife, hit over the head with an iron bar. You've not been unconscious. Apart from that, you're fine. Yeah, good. On the way to hospital, Ray tries to ascertain how far the knife has penetrated. So tell me again about this knife. Did you catch a gumshot? It was a long part of the car. A what knife? Well, it's a knife. He's been stabbed in the chest, just to the right of the, the breastbone. Stabbed in the right side. But what he described as a potato knife, a wooden handle, three-inch blade maybe. And hit about the head several times, at least 20 times he says, but... That'll be another statistic for him tonight, I think. A serious stabbing. The type of injuries we see vary from very innocent looking wounds to very graphic, massive, large open wounds, depending on the weapons used, from knives, from machetes, up to and including bayonets and swords. Well, this patient's been stabbed in the neck. You can see the knife is a kitchen knife sticking into uh, the, the notch just at the, at the bottom of the neck uh, where the windpipe is. This man was hit in the back of the head with a machete and it sliced through the, the back of the skull there and you can see the bones being lifted off the outer table of the skull. We see machete wounds uh, like this on a regular basis. I mean, we certainly see machete wounds every week. Well, this to me just sums up how trivial life seems to be in many parts of Glasgow. A man's been killed with his own sword over an argument about a dog, and it doesn't even justify getting a front page or headline news. It's in the News Digest. You know, it seems to be such a common and trivial thing to have happened. Glasgow's ambulance service continues to patch up the casualties of drink fueled violence. Well, it's a report of a 33-year-old male with a, a head injury bleeding badly. It could be an assault, it could be absolutely anything. In the majority of call-outs, alcohol is a contributing factor. During their shift, Ray and Lynn assist three serious assaults. I believe these ladies been assaulted. That's all we really know at the moment and several other alcohol-related injuries. Towards the end of the night, yet another stab victim arrives. This time, the weapon in question is a sword. But he seems to have a knife wound to his back, with several wounds to his scalp, partly inflicted by a sword. For Glasgow's medical teams, it's business as usual. In part two, we look at how the police try and tackle Glasgow's blade culture. There is no place for this on the streets of any town. And we see the devastation that random attacks have on families. No, they left you online right down there to die. They left them to die. A knife-carrying culture combined with a willingness to kill has seen Glasgow being branded as the murder capital of Western Europe. Coming up, we look at the action police are taking to reduce violence on the streets. It's not just the carrying of knives, it's what it can lead to. And we see if the high stabbing rate can be blamed on the widespread availability of knives. We sell probably in the region of 20 to, to 30 knives a week. Violence has been their method, a violence which has earned Glasgow the reputation as the toughest city in Britain. The strong presence of gangs in Glasgow has been apparent throughout the last century, creating an image that would survive for decades. Blades have always been a popular tool in Glasgow's underworld, but it was the cutthroat razor that was the most popular in the past. In the bad old days in Glasgow, you tended to hear a lot about the Glasgow smile, which was created by a couple of razor slashes just like that 
winning them out, showing a lot more teeth and leaving the person disfigured but very much with a distorted smile. Today, knives are used instead of razors. But the weapon of choice isn't the only thing that's changed. The motive for violence appears to be different. There's simply a new breed of criminal around. In the bad old days, you had some interesting godfathers and people who concentrated in bank robbery. And now the streets seem to be awash with what are simply just young, greedy neds who are prepared to cause trouble just simply for killing. Running battles between some of Glasgow's 200 gangs often leads to serious injury and even death. But the territorial nature of NEDs is not always just aimed at other gangs. Attacks on innocent members of the public venturing down the wrong street can occur. Pollock in West Glasgow was the scene of one such motiveless attack in the year 2000. Because they were bored, wanted a bit of fun. John was in the wrong place at the wrong time. 25-year-old John Davidson became the victim of a group of youths who considered him to be on their territory. John was walking down the Leafland Road and a couple of them had said, what are you looking at? And John came running round the corner. As he came round the corner, some of them came running out the lane and John's, it was an icy, an icy night and John's shoe had come off and he fell down and they just beat him and stabbed him all the time in the back. They left John lying right down there to die. They left them to die. Two young men were later convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. I hated the headlines. Wrong place at the wrong time. He should, he should be able to walk where the place he was brought up. Mm -hmm. That man there, he was in a court and turned round when he got his sentence and realised that Nene's pals were there and gave my sister the finger. Stuck his finger up at my sister. Oh, angry, I'd love, to, I'd love to kill them. I'd love to decapitate them, so I would. And shove their head right up their arse. At Govan Police Station, they're preparing to go out and tackle the problem of violent crimes committed by youths. Chief Inspector Eddie Smith briefs the task force. Um, objectives as normal to engage with and communicate with the young people as well and detect and deal effectively with young offenders. Well, the body armour came about because of the sad death of a serving police officer some years ago, and as a consequence of that, the force invested a great deal of technology and a great deal of money in ensuring that our officers were uh, protected. One of the problems we have in this particular subdivision is the knife culture and I would say amongst the hardcore uh, the carrying of knives is a real big issue because it's not just the carrying of knives it's what it can lead to. Uh, I've seen stabbings, people getting downs, put away in an ambulance, heard the people getting caught, know somebody has been caught. A call comes through of a disturbance involving youths in a nearby housing estate. Uh, on arrival we noticed quite a few youth standing in the clothes here. They were all searched. They were searched uh, primarily, they consented to search, and we were searching them for offensive weapons. And uh, any, you know, it's not unknown for 12 and 14 year olds to have cannabis on them as well in this area. So it's basically searching for drugs and offensive weapons. What we've tried to do this summer, rather than go out and just, um, you know, enforce the legislation as it stands, is try and speak to young people and explain to them the impact that it's having and you know, actually engage with them as individuals and human beings. Ah, uh, the person got an attitude. They think you stand at a corner, they, they think they're better than you, so move on, and they move you on to trouble. Or like, uh, if you went into a different area, you'd probably just get attacked. You're in the gang for, like, protect each other. Somebody else is going into somebody else's territory, they're going to have a knife or something on them for protection. Strathclyde police have been targeting knife crime with many campaigns over the years. Their most recent being Operation Magnet. We searched over two and a half thousand people in a six month period and recovered over 200 weapons. That's like a, a one in ten hit. Uh, uh, we've had a full range of, of weapons um, from razor blades, machetes, axes, um, pickaxe handles, you name it, we've recovered it. Despite the huge success of such campaigns, keeping knives off the streets of Glasgow is an uphill struggle.
Shop owner Martin Morris is very aware of Glasgow's knife carrying culture and is happy to, quite legally, capitalise on it. For some reason, a lot of people think it's perhaps quite macho to carry a knife. Morris sells a variety of electrical and musical equipment, but also stocks goods that he describes as novelty items. This includes replica machine guns, swords of various description, and a huge range of knives. Well, we sell probably in the region of 20 to, to 30 knives a week. This is a small selection of what we carry. This is what's described as a, a lock knife. Called a lock knife simply because you open it and it locks. Oh, I much prefer a knife would be a wee one, a wee lock back. Many knives that are being used are lock backs, everybody uses them now. Uh, the idea being that if it's used at all, the, the blade doesn't bend. You'd use that for almost any purpose, household, opening parcels. This is a hunting knife. They're quite often described as fantasy knives and it's got the ornate decoration on it. There is no place for this on the streets of any town. One of the more extreme finds we've had are machetes. Um, these tend to be concealed down the trouser leg. What is often referred as a samurai sword, this one's particularly ornate. Probably more used to scare people off waving about in the air. If I were to do that, I could probably cut myself. In Operation Magnet, they recovered 200 weapons in six months. In the same period, Martin Morris's shop sold nearly 500. When one considers that knives are available for many types of shop, the scale of the problem becomes clear. The second most popular knife that we recovered was a, a kitchen knife, uh, found obviously in any kitchen in the country, uh, readily accessible and uh, quite clearly uh, very dangerous. I can guarantee being Q sell more on a Saturday morning than we do. They sell more in one morning than we probably do in one month. I'm certainly not ashamed of anything that we sell. I must point out, I don't sell weapons, I sell knives. A knife is only a weapon if used in an aggressive and offensive manner. Of all the murders that happen in this city, over half are committed with the use of a knife. The casualties of Glasgow's blade-carrying culture continue to mount. The murders, the stabbings, the serious assaults, gang fights. Glasgow has a real problem, a problem that must be solved. I think it'll get worse before it gets better. Well, nobody just be knives, they'll go into bigger stuff, guns. Violence is ingrained in the, in the communities and uh, it's part and parcel of their everyday lives. And until we can change that, then we will not see an end to the problem. Glasgow may not always be the murder capital of Western Europe but it will remain one of Britain's toughest towns. Next time we visit Belfast, where violence continues 10 years after the ceasefire, and we meet the victims of the gruesome punishment beatings that make Belfast one of Britain's toughest towns.